The first episode starts by introducing us to Arisu, an irredeemable gamer who is stuck in front of his computer screen. His brother walks in and scolds him about an interview he set up for Arisu, but he didn't even show up. He tells Arisu that he is a parasite in this house. Arisu says that if that's so, he will leave. Indeed, he leaves his house and texts his friends, Karube, who just got fired because he was making out with his boss's girlfriend, and Chota, who just skipped work for today. When they get together, they talk about a hypothetical zombie attack. Karube says that Arisa would be the one to survive it because he is smart. He furthermore tells him to stop hanging out with them and go do something with his life. Although the mood is ruined for a couple of seconds, Karube gets Arisu on his shoulders and runs in the crowd. Chota takes pictures of Arisu to celebrate his first day of independence. But since they are in the middle of the road, they cause a traffic jam and a mild accident. They run inside the subway station's restroom to get away from the police, but suddenly there is a power outage. They walk out of the station only to realize that all the people are gone. They take a look around, but there is nobody, nowhere. Even their cell phones don't get any signal. They discuss it and Arisu says that maybe that's not that bad. They don't have to go to work and nobody will get angry or disappointed at them. But shortly, a large building lights up and a message appears, saying that the game will start soon. An arrow indicates which direction they have to go. They follow the directions and get into another building where they follow more directions. Each of them gets one phone. A girl walks near them, Shibuki, and tells them they have to play the game. There is no other choice. Another girl joins them and the instructions are announced through their phones. The name of the first game is Dead or Alive and the difficulty of it is three of clubs. To clear the stage, they have to pick the right door in the given time frame, which starts from two minutes and constantly reduces. In the first room, the girl opens one of the doors and she is killed since it's the wrong one. In the second room, Karubi mans up and is lucky enough to choose the correct door. In the next room, the group fights about what they should do and who should open the next door and risk his or her life. Arisu puts his observation skills to work and they clear the game. When they walk outside the building, they see a three of clubs card laying on a table. They receive a notification on their phones that they have been granted a visa for three days. A man appears and tells him his visa expires today and he doesn't want to play anymore. A laser beam kills him. Shibuki says that they have to keep playing if they want to live. The first episode ends with a girl, Usagi, standing on a rooftop and watching a sky full of ready to kill lasers. Episode 2 starts by giving us a sneak peek into Usagi's past and presents her going rock climbing with her father. Then we are taken back to Tokyo where Chota tells Arisu that electronic devices don't work, but old fashioned radios work on some frequencies. Later, the group of four is enjoying a meal together. Karube asks Shibuki where she was when the incident happened. While talking, Shibuki reveals that she has played yet another game before she met them. Karube blames her that she must have used the other players as bait and she replies she did what she had to do to survive. Arisu comments that it's weird how they got into the game just yesterday, but Shibuki was brought in some days ago. They speculate on that and Arisu adds that there must be a game master who has organized this whole game. Shibuki says that they might be inside a virtual world, similar to the real one, while Chota says that this might also be a work of God himself. Chota has burnt his leg in the first game and he is in pain. Arisu and Karube decide to join another game to earn some more time and maybe find a doctor or discover something new about the game. They do so and find themselves in a group of 10 people. Usagi is one of them. The game will be tag and the objectives are to avoid being tagged by the one who is it and find and touch a secret symbol which is hidden somewhere. The time they get is 20 minutes. The game starts and the tagger apparently is a tall man with a horse mask and an Uzi walking around and shooting people. In the meantime, Shibuki seduces Chota and tells him they need to work together to stay alive. Back in the game, the tagger has killed half of the participants. The remaining ones agree to work together to take him down. Arisu and Usagi will search for the symbol while the others will eliminate the tagger. Karube and two other players fight with the tagger while Arisu figures out where the symbol is. He walks into a room but there is another guard there. Furthermore, to clear the game, there must be two players present to push two different buttons at the same time. 
While fighting the guard, Arisu shouts for help. Usagi climbs from floor to floor and reaches him. They take the guard down, press the buttons, and clear the game. Karube and another player, Aguni, have taken the tagger down. Both the tagger and the other guard are killed through a collar they wear around their necks. Karubi sees the tagger's phone and it says, game over. The guards have been forced to play the game just like them. Karubi hears some chatter on a radio communicator. He picks it up from a dead player's pocket who was friends with Aguni and listens to a male voice saying that the answer is now in their hands. The voice says they should return back to the beach. Karubi turns his head around and Aguni is gone. And that marks the end of episode 2. In the beginning of episode 3, we see Arisu feeling guilty about the dead guard in the room. Usagi tells him that they will have to do anything to survive. Arisu and Kurubi return home to Chota and Shibuki and tell them about the radio and the beach. They number three beaches that are near them and think of going there. Shibuki says that Chota can't walk and in addition, her visa and Chota's visa end today. Karubi says they will join another game today to extend their visas and then search about that beach. Later they join a game and enter a theme garden. Standing in front of a couple of stands, the instructions say they can use any weapon they like from the ones laying in front of them. They need to also wear the goggles on their heads. The difficulty is seven of hearts. They comment that hearts are the worst because they have to play with each other's hearts and additionally the number seven is quite high, hence pretty difficult. The game is hide and seek. One of the players will be assigned as a wolf and the other three as lambs. In the end, the one assigned as the wolf will be the winner of the game and survive while the others will be killed by the machinery fastened around their necks. Therefore, the lambs are the ones that need to chase the wolf. Chota is assigned as the first wolf and they soon realize that the role of the wolf is passed upon another player when they lock their eyes to each other. While trying to figure out what to do, the role of the wolf passes from Chota to Arisu and from Arisu to Karube. Eventually, it passes from Karube to Shibuki. When she is the wolf, she starts running in order to hide and survive. Arisu and Karubi get to her and Arisu gets to be the wolf. He runs away and hides, trying to remove the goggles from his head, but he can. The team is divided both physically and emotionally, and Chota prays to God for help while they hurt each other with harsh words. After a few moments, they start remembering all the beautiful moments they have spent together and they actually remember they are good friends. Arisu wants to quit the game and give the wolf role to someone else, but now the others hide from him. When there are only a few seconds left, Karubi reveals himself but doesn't look Arisu in the eyes. The time is up and the chips explode, killing Karube, Chota, and Shibuki. In episode 4, we get to spend some time with Usagi and follow her through her daily routine. On a rainy day, she stumbles upon Arisu who is laying on the road and wants to die. We are taken back to Usagi's past when she used to climb to mountain tops with her father. She tells her father that this is the only place where she feels like herself, but a scandal breaks out involving her father and he disappears. Back to present, Arisu wakes up in Usagi's turf and asks her why she saved him. He wants to die, just like all of his friends. Usagi tells him that she knows how that feels because she has gone through it herself when she lost her father. Eventually, she convinces him to not let his visa expire and to participate in a new game. The following game is going to take place in a tunnel road. Arisu and Usagi get into a bus and they find three other players sitting in it. They tell them they have cleared four games together and they work as a team. They receive their instructions and the name of the game will be Distance. The players will need to reach the goal destination safely and endure the trial. They try to start the bus, but it has no fuel, so they need to go on foot. One of the other players, Takuma, has sprained his ankle and he can't run. He tells his friends to go and he will stay back. The four other players start running for some miles until they stumble upon a panther. The panther hunts them down and gets to a player called Rezan. The panther eats him, but the others escape. On their way, Arizu sees a motorcycle that he knows runs on diesel. He says the bus back where they started may also work since it doesn't have any electrical circuits and thus it will not be jammed. He tells Usagi and the other player Yamane to run and he will take the motorcycle back to fuel the bus and save Takuma. Usagi and Yamane run forward and they reach a dead end. They chat for a while but soon realize that the concrete behind them is going to break and water is about to flood the tunnel. 
They start running, but water soon catches up with them and swallows Yamane. Thankfully, the bus approaches near Usagi and she hops in before the water kills her as well. The bus has been turned over its side. When the three remaining players climb to the top of it, a graffiti to the side of the bus reveals the word goal, which means the bus was their goal all along and the distance was a metric that counted how far they are from the goal. That's why the phones read zero when they were in the bus. The episode ends with Arisu telling Usagi that he wants to find who the mastermind of this sick game is and restore the world to the way it was before. The two of them ride a bike and cross a bridge heading to the beach. Episode 5 starts with Arisu visiting a random game but not entering it and asking the players if they have any information about the beach. Arisu and Usagi are dedicated to finding the beach. Later they split up and follow the participants into two different games. They spot some specific players who are wearing locker keys on their wrists. They follow them and they finally find the beach, which is a large building similar to a giant 5 star hotel. They are hit from behind and kidnapped and they are taken to the beach's hall. Several people welcome them there but only one of them seems to be the leader. Arisu says that they are looking for answers about the game. The leader opens the entrance to a larger room where he has been marking the cards he has gotten. He explains that only one person can leave this world and return to the normal world. To do that, one has to gather all the cards that the game rewards the players with. But since that would be impossible for one single person to achieve, they united for that sole purpose, to gather all the cards and send someone back to the normal world. The beach has a tier system incorporated and each player is given points for the cards they bring in. In addition, the beach has three rules. One, wear a swimsuit wherever you go. Two, all cards earned by the members belong to the beach. Three, death to all traitors, meaning that one can't refuse to cooperate with the beach. Finally, the leader says that for each full set of cards they get, they can send another person back to the ordinary world. Arisu and Usagi take a look around the small community and they get some odd looks. The leader of the beach, whom now the crowd calls Hatter, announces that he has found two new games and divides the people into two groups. Each group will attain a unique game. Meanwhile, one of the top tier members, Anne, takes Arisu to a test game to determine if he would make a good executive for the beach. The test is to determine which switch turns a light bulb on before the water levels reach an electrical circuit that will fry them all. The catch is they can't actually see the light bulb while using the switches. Arisu uses a switch and then tells another player, Kuina, to check if the bulb is hot. Since it is hot, the switch he flipped turned it on and hence he has the answer and clears the game. Arisu returns back at the beach and he meets with Usagi. Moments later, Akuni and his crew walk in heavily armed. Kuina tells Arisu that these are the militants of the beach and warns him to stay out of their way. Arisu and Aguni have a confrontation but Hatter walks in and puts an end to it. He calls a meeting with the executives and tells Arisu to join as well. In the meeting, he says that figure cards have not appeared anywhere so they are probably not a part of the game. The only card they are missing now is the 10 of hearts. He also says that his visa will expire soon and he will join the next game. The episode ends with Hatter calling Arisu for a drink and telling him that heroes are born out of a great sacrifice. Episode 6 starts with Usagi banging on Arisu's door and waking him up. As soon as he's up, Arisu says that they need to gather information. He starts talking with various people seeking answers. At some point, he hears a gunshot and sees three of Hatter's men walking away from a dumpster. He approaches that dumpster and sees that dead bodies are disposed in it. Arisu is approached by Kuina and her friend, Chishia, who reminds Arisu of the third rule of the beach, death to all traitors. Chishia and Kuina have a talk with him and tell him that it's a matter of time before the militants kill Hatter and take his position. And then the beach is going to be controlled by a bunch of idiots with guns. Chishia says that he is planning to steal the cards and leave this place. Hatter has to temporarily leave the beach to attend a game and expand his visa. But shortly after, he is brought back with a bullet in his chest. The executives argue about who should be the next leader. Aguni's men point their guns to the executives and they have no other choice but to vote for Aguni. Chishia has convinced Arisu to help him with his plan and when Aguni gives his speech as the new leader, Chishia guides Arisu to the leader's room. He tells him the code to open the safe and get the cards but the code is wrong and as it appears, Chishia has set Arisu up. 
Arisu is restrained onto a chair and they tell him that his visa is running out of time and he can't do anything about it. They leave him there to die when the laser drills his head. Usagi is also arrested and mistreated. Chishia returns back to the leader's room and steals the cards. He is ready to flee from the beach and has a short talk with Kuina, who tells him that he should be feeling guilty about setting up Arisu. However, Chishia realizes that he can't leave because the beach has been turned into a game arena and the lasers will not allow anyone to get past the exit. The monitors and the speakers announce that everybody has to report to the lobby for the game. Everyone gathers to the lobby except Arisu, who is tied up. The people get their phones and suddenly, a woman is lying dead on the floor with a knife through her chest. Episode 6 ends with the announcement of the game and its rules. The game is called Witch Hunt and the objective is to find the person who murdered that woman and burn them into the fire of justice. The time limit will be 2 hours. The beginning of episode 7 is action packed. The people put the blame on the girl who used to be friends with the dead woman, Asahi, and they want to throw her into the fire that's burning on the backyard. One of the executives, Mira, stops them and says that everyone is equally guilty. Anne says that everybody will have to give explanations about what they were doing for the past hour and prove it. Anne is holding a napkin with a blood stain in her hand and the people ask her about it. Anne reveals that the blood belongs to Hatter. She extracted the bullet out of his body and it belongs to the kinds of guns they have in the beach. Hatter was also murdered. Akuni walks in with his men and says that everyone in this room could be the witch except him. He says the witch should step forward or else he will burn everybody. Akuni's men fire in the air and chaos breaks out. Usagi takes Asahi and the last remaining phone that would belong to Arisu and runs away. Aguni's men start killing people and throwing them into the fire, hoping that one of them will be the witch and the game will be finished. Meanwhile, Usagi meets with Tada, who they've known since the tag game and they form an alliance together. At the same time, Kuina and Chishia are observing the action through the cameras in the control room. Kuina sees Anne searching for something in a room and soon joins her. She asks Anne what she is doing and Anne tells her she is looking for a chemical substance to apply on the knife and hopefully find some fingerprints on it. She reveals she used to work in forensics before she got here. One of Aguni's guards, last boss, gets in the way. Kuina tells Anne to go and maybe she can clear the game while she deals with this guy. Anne leaves and Kuina starts fighting with last boss. While fighting, they share their backstories. Last Boss used to be a blogger who never got the attention he wanted and found an opportunity to be someone new when this new world emerged. Kuina was a boy who used to practice karate with his father, but one day his father found cosmetics in his room and kicked him out of the house. When we get back to the action, Kuina uses her karate skills to defeat and kill Last Boss. Arisu trips his chair over and he scrapes the tape on the floor. He manages to remove it from his mouth and he screams for help. Usagi, Tata, and Asahi walk through the hallways and they start hearing something. Usagi is able to listen to Arisu and finds him. She sets him free and Arisu starts thinking about the game. He says that he has to think like the game master would think. He says that the game master waited for the perfect opportunity to start this game. It was not coincidental. Simultaneously, Anne is examining the knife and exclaims that she knows who did it but when she runs out of the room, she is hit by two of Aguni's men. While thinking, Arisu jumps up and says that he thinks he knows who the witch is, signaling the end of episode 7. Episode 8 starts with Aguni and his men having cornered all the remaining players. Aguni orders his men to kill everybody, but they have become hesitant. Arisu walks near them and says this has to stop. He says Aguni knows he can't be the witch because he had him tied up. If Aguni is not the witch himself, he will want to work with Arisu to find the witch. Aguni gives Arisu a beating and then admits he is the witch. But Arisu tells everybody that Aguni is not the witch. He killed Hatter but not the girl. He can see it in his eyes, the guilt of killing your friends. Arisu says that Aguni could have taken over the beach because he had the guns, but he and Hatter were actually friends. The episode takes us back to some previous events and shows us Aguni being shocked by how Hatter had turned himself into a monster and killed many people because they hid their cards from him. Next we also see what happened when Hatter went to play in a game to extend his visa. 
Aguni told him he wants to leave the beach because he has lost the only friend he had, Hatter. Since Hatter's third rule was death to all traitors, he wanted to shoot him, but Aguni shot him first. And now, Aguni wants to take everyone down with him. Arisu also says that the girl stabbed herself and she is the witch. It was all the game master's trick to play with their hearts. Arisu says that the killings of innocent people have to stop. Asahi stands in front of everybody and says she was a dealer for the game and she gets hit by a laser. The fire of judgment spreads even more and they take the witch's body to throw it in. The next day, Arisu and Usagi watch a video that Asahi has left on her phone. She and her friend woke up in an empty Tokyo and then were approached by a man. They were assigned as dealers, assistants who would help facilitate the games, or act as fake players who would intentionally disorientate the real players. In return, they would get two added weeks of life. Of course, if they said something about it, they would be killed. Asahi has shot one more video secretly, walking into the secret base where the game masters were hiding. They watch the games and bet on their favorite players, while laughing at their suffering. Arisu and Usagi visit that place, but everyone has been killed with the signature lasers. Chishia and Kuina also walk in that place and they have a short talk. They say that these people weren't the game masters, there is someone above them. An emergency broadcasting interrupts them. It is Mira who gives a short speech and sums things up by saying that the surviving players will participate in more games and this time they will have to go against the face cards. Arisu says that at least this time they know who their enemy is. The series ends with the new group of four waiting for the new games to start while staring at air balloons carrying face card banners. Subscribe and hit that like button to help our channel grow. Turn the notifications on so you won't miss any of our new videos. Thanks for watching.